we're somewhat of a different creature and they don't know, they have never had any experience of even dealing with a city that does the service we do. The city of Somerset receives a scathing report by the state auditor, but the mayor of Somerset claims the auditor simply doesn't understand this city. Some drama this morning at the Kentucky State Fair. Why police arrested three people at the Country Ham Breakfast. Just a place to come to and remember what happened on that day. We're here every year at this time. A somber anniversary in Kentucky today. Here from those commemorating nine years since a plane crash claiming the lives of 49 people. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. He says the state auditor doesn't understand his town. Tonight we are hearing from the mayor of Somerset after an examination revealed some problems. The state auditor's report found the city did not seek bids required on thousands of dollars worth of work and did not follow proper policies on some payments to vendors. Phil Pendleton is talking to the mayor of Somerset about the findings. He has our top story at 530. Eddie Girdler says Somerset is a town that's very unique, and he says State Auditor Adam Edlin doesn't understand that. We're somewhat of a different creature, and they don't know, they have never had any experience of even dealing with a city that does the service we do. Somerset has its own natural gas pipelines and sells gasoline. Girdler says its residents have seen nearly a decade of benefits. You've lowered property taxes for nine years in a row. You've never had a rate increase in utilities for nine years in a row. Complaints from the community. Yet the auditor says a special examination shows the town spending money and making management decisions without proper oversight. And what we found is a city where the leadership cut too many corners, did uh, you know things like no bid contracts and not enough proper oversight. And frankly, we just think that they, they, the community could be run a lot better. The report also stated that some city employees are working in fear and will not speak up for fear of retaliation. But the mayor tells me that angry employees are everywhere. Just looked at what happened to your industry yesterday because somebody's disgruntled. You know, Sure, you're going to have disgruntled employees who doesn't get a raise or they don't get a promotion or whatever. Local attorney John Adams is closely watching the developments within the city. Generally, they understand there's a lot of contention between the auditor's office and the city. And they're just, they, I think they feel like they're caught in the middle. Edlin says this is not how a city needs to be run. The mayor claims it's all political. He's never run a city, and he's not a CPA, and He's a politician. The auditor says the findings will be turned over to several agencies, including the Attorney General's office. In Somerset, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Somerset's mayor says the report did not indicate there was money missing, fraud, or any criminal activity within the city. New tonight, police are looking for someone they say broke into a gun store in Mount Sterling. Police say last night the person in this video rammed a dumpster into the door of Walter's arms, breaking the door. Uh, police believe the car he had is stolen. They say the suspect stole about $850 worth of guns, but caused thousands of dollars worth of damage to that building. A Lexington police officer accused of being too rough during an arrest entered an Alford plea today. Officer James Norris was initially charged with second degree official misconduct and harassment with physical conduct. The misconduct charge was dropped. Court documents show that Norris repeatedly shoved a restrained suspect back in January. By entering an Alfred plea, Norris is not admitting his guilty of harassment, but thinks that there is enough evidence for a jury to find him guilty. Deputies in central Kentucky are looking for a man they say did not comply with his sex offender registration. Our county by county coverage begins in Boyle County. Deputies say they went to the last registered address for Vincent Napier but learned he never lived there. He was last registered at a home in Danville. Deputies say Napier is a move in sex offender from California. Deputies have issued a warrant for his arrest. In Pulaski County, some new job opportunities could be coming to that area. Menzer Hardwoods plans to expand to southern Kentucky by adding a new facility to Somerset. The company plans to invest more than $2.5 million. The expansion will create about 90 new jobs. Tonight, many people across this state are marking a somber anniversary. 
Nine years ago, Comair Flight 5191 crashed near Bluegrass Airport in Lexington. Investigators say the flight took off from the wrong runway, killing 49 people. In 2011, the community dedicated a permanent memorial at the UK Arboretum to the victims of that crash. Our Michelle Chamberlain was there today as family members honored the anniversary. It's a story that's new at 5:30. On August 27, 2006, Flight 5191 took off on the wrong runway. The runway too short for a safe takeoff. There was one sole survivor, co-pilot Jim Polhinky, whose only on-camera interview about the crash was for the documentary Soul Survivor. The accident, again, is as fresh as it was yesterday. Today is a day to reflect, to remember those killed on Flight 5191 nine years ago today. This metal sculpture of birds shines brightly. Each bird representing the 49 people killed that day. I think it's a very nice tribute. Among the 49 people killed was Greg Threat, a married man with children who was on the flight for business. His mom says she visits this memorial every year with her family. Just a place to come to and remember what happened on that day. We're here every year at this time. This memorial represents a day that will never be forgotten. Anybody that lived in Lexington at that time was affected by it. Everybody knew somebody that was somehow involved. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Now, there is no public memorial scheduled today for the victims. It was another day of fall like temperatures across central and eastern Kentucky. We've used the word broken record and yeah. other things. Uh, Just simply great yeah. out there. But we are tracking, though, a slight warm up for the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look now at your forecast. We knew this would probably come to an end, right? Yeah, we're going to get a little closer to normal. But to be honest, it's the thunderstorms that I'm tracking for the weekend that are giving us a little cause for concern out there. We look outside across the region as of now. Those temperatures are into the middle 70s across central and eastern. Kentucky, uh, 74 Lexington, Richmond, down into Corbin, Frankfurt at 75. Mix of sun and some clouds out there. Live first alert defender throughout the region. Nothing that is going on as of now. Not expecting anything across the entire area. We look at some clouds across northern parts of the region, and those clouds into far northern Kentucky, just some fair weather cumulus clouds, not going to be causing any kind of precipitation. Uh, that is certainly uh, the case now. Weekend changes, though, ahead, tracking the thunder threat back into the forecast, and then we'll take a little trip down to the tropics and show you Tropical Storm Erica and let you know the track on that and if it will impact our weather here in the Bluegrass State. That's just ahead. The city of Lexington has a new council member. Mayor Jim Gray appointed local businessman Russ Hensley to the 12th district position. He is a part owner and co founder of Hensley Elam, an information technology services company. Hensley is a London native and moved to Lexington in 1995. He is filling the seat left vacant after the death of businessman Ed Lane. He passed away earlier this month after a battle with cancer. This gorgeous weather is a great opportunity to head outside and see the beautiful place we live in. One of the best places to enjoy walking, running, or cycling is the Legacy Trail. And that brings us to our good question today. What are the flagpoles for going up and down the Legacy Trail? They look like they've just been put in. On a bike ride this week, I noticed clusters of three and five flagpoles being installed along the Legacy Trail. There are no flags on the poles, and it got me to wondering, what are these for? Well, after a couple of phone calls, I found out it's all part of the Legacy Trail Public Art Master Plan. The poles will be places for temporary artwork on a flag called Blazes. In all, there will be 61 flags of artwork on the Legacy Trail, and I'm told that they'll go up in the next 30 to 45 days. The flags or blazes are just one part of an effort to use the Legacy Trail as a living exhibit of local art, and it's also a way of marking the trail. So be on the lookout for those. If you have a good question, go to WKYT.com. Kings Island has a special offer for firefighters and police officers coming up how they can enjoy the amusement park at no cost. I'm Bill Bryant. Sports radio host Matt Jones had some company when he met with National Democrats trying to lure him into running for Congress. And the political crowd hit up the Kentucky ham breakfast at the State Fair. The bottom line is ahead. I'm Sam Smith in Rowan County, where the county clerk is continuing to not issue any marriage licenses. We'll have the latest on this story coming up at 6.